Hello and welcome back to another episode of Minnesota Beer Banter. I'm your host, Beer Master from Minnesota, and today we have a special guest, Angie, to help us try and taste some beers. Yay! Hi, I'm Angie. All right, so today we're trying a sampler pack from the Shells Brewery. So the first beer that we're starting with is going to be our Keller Pilsner. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Family tradition since 1860. You didn't even toast me. Okay. Cheers. Cheers <laughs> to the beers. Hmm. That is slightly hoppy. Just a little bit. Very I, slightly. I got kind of like a, a soft, like aroma right away. Nothing too overpowering. For me, this is one that I would have like a couple sips of and I would think, this is a beer that I could drink and then I'd order one and I wouldn't finish it. <laughs> See, I would finish this beer. I might finish your beer. Okay, that's not fine. But I think there's an amber in this mix and I'll finish that one. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. So I definitely got, like she said, a little bit of hoppy notes, but it is kind of like crisp and clean. Like it doesn't linger in my mouth too much like some other beers do. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely a bitter note at the end. It sits better on my tongue. It does. So how does that feel in your mouth? Um, um, slightly warm. <laughs> Not put this in the fridge. <laughs> okay. They're all gonna be kind of warm. We didn't refrigerate them. That's okay. Drink, Next so. time I'll bring my toga. We have a toga <laughs> party with warm beer. It's perfect. Just like my college days. I didn't, I mean, we didn't do that in cosmetology school. So. <laughs> no toga parties. But I think I, so out of a hundred, what would you rate this beer, do you think? Out of a hundred? Out of a hundred. Well, let me sip it one more time. All right. Can never have enough beer. Okay, I'm going to go out of ten because a hundred seems like a little too much. Okay. I would give it to seven. Maybe it's six. So like 6.5? Like the alcohol content? No, like for your rating. I s oh, sure. So it's a 6.5, everybody. 65 out of 100 for my guest. That's what I meant. <laughs> 100%. How about you? Because I don't mind the hops a little bit, I might rate it a little bit higher. I'd probably go like 74. So it's, cause That's it is a, a little, really random number. It is a little hoppy, but not too terrible. Smell it first. Okay, now definitely, sm definitely smells different. Cheers. Why do you have more? It's just not fair. All right, let's go. Oh, that's better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Let's taste it again. Um, when I, as I'm smelling it, I get more like wheat almost, or like the malts. I kind of smell like what they're fermenting a little bit it's there's definitely not as much hops it as feels the like first they one. pulled it too soon out of like the barrel they're mixing it in like there's not a lot of flavor in it as much as i was thinking there would be yeah it's very mild and mellow and smooth like so what is this one called this one is called fire brick so they burned all the fire off the brick and it's just the flavor of the brick left over that's what i would describe Have it you as licked a brick before Probably once, but I don't really remember. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this reminds me of the time that I licked a brick once. Okay, so this is the, so the first one was the toga beer. This one is the fire licking brick beer. Good way to describe it. I think it's the I, best way. I agree, it, it, it does kind of remind me of some of the domestic beers, but maybe just a step above, right? Like a little more flavor than what you might get out of like a Coors Light or a Michelob Light or an Amber Light, just a little more. When you smell it, it's got like almost cocoa-y type scents to it, like an earthy type sense. Yeah. But then when you taste it, that you're would be like the brick coming in. That's the brick. Yeah. And then you're like expecting the fire and the pizzazz, and it's like. <clears throat> this is one that I would taste in like a beer flight and be like, okay, cool, that was a nice flavor. Put it to the side. Is it better? Do you like it more or less than the Keller Pills? 
I'm gonna go with less. Less, because this is the one you said was the amber and I'll finish for you. Is it? This is the amber fire brick. Oh, now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes. To me, there is no bad beer unless it's brewed wrong and there's like something going bad. So I still like this one. I still think people should try it. I feel bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just not my favorite. <laughs> it's just, um, yeah. We'll just, you know, drink some more of that. I think this is a great beer to drink every day. Like if you had a standard daily drinking beer, this would be one that I would choose. Like I could get a 12 pack of this and be happy for like a week or two. Yeah, I'd play this one if I was like playing Hammerschlagen and I had a slight buzz. And then all you have in your hand is a beer that you don't really care about. There you go. It's been a long time since I played Hammerschlagen. Me too, but whenever I go to my parents' house, it's always Hammerschlagen. You have certainly cooler parents than I do, let's say that. <laughs> my parents are pretty cool. <laughs> If my mom and dad see this, hi, mom and dad. <laughs> I said you were cool. Sorry, mom and dad. I said you weren't as cool as her parents. <laughs> <laughs> so now we definitely have to, like, make sure our parents are, like, seeing this. Okay, anyway. Cheers to our parents. Cheers <laughs> to mom and dad. Thanks for the hammer slogging days and the lukewarm beer. <laughs> I think... Since I like this a little more, I would probably give this one like a 79. Like it's still a good beer. There's nothing wrong with it. I would still drink it, but it's not one of my favorite beers. No, I feel like I'm judging unfairly. Yes, the more I drink it, the more I'm like, you know what, I kind of like it. But like those first couple of tastes were like, mm, 5% out of 10. So what's your, what's your final verdict? Okay, honesty, seven. All right, seven out of 10. Seven out of 10. So not too far off. Nope. <laughs> now we're gonna try the, I can't, I can't even. <laughs> I got it. The Fort Road Porter, Fort English Road. style. Brown. Porter. And it's brown, yes. Not pink like a guava. You can definitely tell it's brown. I'm yes. not pink. Well, it looks very dark, like a Coke without uh, fizziness. Mmm, it smells <laughs> poisonous. <laughs> smells, <laughs> to me it smells like malty. I get like kind of like a caramely smell, maybe. Mm. Or like a, like molasses, like that kind of dark, rich, sugary smell right away. Yeah, like a lot of this is something that your, your grandma would use in like crock pot baking. Good way to describe it, like a grandma meal. Grandma meal. <laughs> Grandma meal. Package it, sell it, right, done. Let's try it this time. Right, we'll cheers. clink again. Mmm, <laughs> you know what? It tastes a lot better than it smells. I agree. It's because Grandma meal is really not that appealing of a sound for it. No, but it definitely tastes good. Mm, yeah, but that smell is so strong. It like punches you in the nose with like it smells like almost intoxicating and not a good way. See, this one I, I like because it's got kind of like that dry finish. So there's like some molasses and sugar, but it doesn't like linger in my mouth, which is kind of nice. I feel like maybe if you don't open up your mouth too much and let all that air in and you close it, it's like... Do you want me to comment on it or not? Anyway, <laughs> it's a good beer. Well, I just thought you were talking about not opening your mouth, so I thought I would open my mouth yes, to see. Yes, okay. Anyway, so you know that um, that old trick like when you don't open your mouth wide enough and you don't let air in when you're drinking like whiskey or scotch or something really yep. strong that you don't taste how bitter and strong it is? Yep. If you do that with this beer, it's great. But if you breathe, it's like overwhelming with its flavors. Yeah, I, I did get that when I kind of gurgled it a little bit. Yeah, you have to exhale and then drink. And then it's great. I could chug this whole thing. But if I go... <gasps> It's just overwhelming for me. Yeah, I see it. Like, I love the malts that's in here. It's got kind of that like deep, rich, complex flavor. So the oxygen level really affects how you taste it, which is kind of nice. I like it though. You could pour this or, well, no. I was gonna say with root beer and like vanilla ice cream and maybe it'd be good. I think it's good how it is, but. But vanilla ice cream would like pump it up. That's true. I like all beer. 
unless beer is well that's good because you host the beer banter show <laughs> the reason they call me beer master beer master likes the stouts and the porters i like beer yeah but you really like the stouts and porters i do i typically like more dark beers but people will be like what do you like to drink and i'll be like yes Yes, yeah, just pass it all this way. <laughs> as long as it's wet and alcoholic, I'll try it. But I think I like this beer. I think it's a great everyday beer. I'd probably give it a 75. I think I like the amber a little more. Mm. So it's kind of, I'd kind of put this one probably between the between the amber and the pilsner. Hmm. I don't know. I feel bad because they're all kind of around the same level for me. Like, none of them are, like, standing out to me as, wow, this one is amazing. I could, like, drink multiple of those. I feel that. That's why they're all in, like, that kind of 70-ish range. Yeah. But I do like this one, and normally I don't like um, Stouts or Porters, so So it works for me. So good job to Shells. To what? To Shells, the brewery. Taking on a good, easy-drinking beer. The one we're reviewing, you Right, that one. Oh, got it. Okay. (laughs) Yes, I like it. Thank you. Shells. Uh, what, you, what is your final rating? Mm. Mm, uh, um, uh, a six. Fair enough. What about you? Wait, what did you say? Did you already say? Like a seventy-four. Like between the cal, the between the pills and the fire brick. Wasn't your first one a seventy-four? Look at that. It's like I worked in a brewery one time or something. Right. Who knew that you worked in a brewery at some point or another in your life? I did. Which brewery did you work in, by the way? I worked at Boathouse Brew Pub in Ely, Minnesota. I haven't been to that one. Is it, is it still there? Yeah, and it's awesome. It was a really cool place to work, filled with uh, interesting people. And tons of tourists, for sure. Oh, I bet. I know is a every, tourist every, town. every brewery I've been to is interesting <clears throat> and tons of interesting people. I worked at Excelsior Brewery in uh, Excelsior, Minnesota. So mm-hmm. it's interesting to see how they all change. Yeah, no, um, they are one that didn't order any of their own beer. So, like, everything was brewed there. Like, they didn't have Bud Light, they didn't have Miller Light or anything like that. It was all made by one specific brewmaster, which was really cool. Nice. And he would switch it up. And their signature one was the blueberry one. Well, if you ever get it, bring it on. I'd like to try it yeah. on the show. Well, the next time I get a growler of the blueberry, <laughs> and we'll just drink the whole thing. <laughs> you heard it first. The next time she gets one, the whole thing, and you'll see it all. Actually, that could be a really fun episode. <laughs> like, we'll just, like, just drink the whole, the whole thing. whole thing of blueberry? Yeah. Right. Actually, that'd be a lot of sugar, so maybe not. But, I mean, if they have other ones that... We'll get our producer involved. Yes. <laughs> Zach. You chug the growler with us. It's blueberry, so he's got to like it. It's blueberry. It's not guava. All right. I have sniffed one, so I know what it smells like now. A guava or a yeah, blueberry? Yeah, a guava. I've sniffed a guava <laughs> now. I bought one specifically to sniff it so I could smell, know what it smells like. Okay, well, let's drink this one now. <laughs> That's not a guava. Not and a move guava. on from that word. I'm so done saying it. <laughs> okay, ready? Right. Think. Cheers. Smell it. And go. You can definitely smell how dark it is right away. Yeah, it just looks dark. Like my soul. Like the happiness. <laughs> but it tastes better than my soul. Nope. I like this one. Oh. This is by far my favorite one out of all of these. Well, I taste it again for camera sake, but no. <laughs> it's got a very dry finish. A little bit bitter. <laughs> and I get both. So we, yep. know, we know where Angie stands. It's a and solid two. That's the beauty of beer, right? Like, no one likes everything, and it's all different. So I'm glad I could have a guest that has a different perspective from me. So kind of give you some other insight as well. Are most of your um, shows, like, positive? Like, this is great. This is amazing. I kind of like this one. Uh, and there's never where you're, you go like this. Oh, there, there's some where I'm like, ooh, this is sour, and you can, like, see it in my face, and I'm like, it's a sour beer, not my thing. If you like sours, you like this one, but I don't like sours. So, like, I try to be fair and positive and upbeat. That makes me feel like I swallowed, like, really burnt something or, like, an ashtray. I don't like it. I don't mind it. Um, It's dark. It it's is like dark. It's, like, too dark for me. That's really what it is. 
I can definitely get where you're seeing with like the smoke and some of those other flavors to kind of give you that ashtray. But like I've had other beers where I feel like I'm licking an ashtray and I don't like that. I think this you is maybe, don't like that? I don't like licking an ashtray, oddly enough. <laughs> but I feel like this is a little more subtle. It's like if I just licked a cigarette versus an ashtray. It's a little bit of smoke. Licked a cigarette. Well, my question first of all is why would you want to lick a cigarette? I wanna, you just lick it? I want to know what it tastes like without having to smoke it. Okay. But have you inhaled ash from an ashtray? I feel like... No. See, I've done that. I have That's you. what it tastes like. That's what, <laughs> well, then I might now have to do that because I like this. Yes. You can compare and be like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> or not because it doesn't taste good. But I think uh, a lot of people have been there. Yes. Inhaled the ash. So I, I agree. I think if you like dark, heavy, smoky kind of flavors, you'd like this black bock, which is kind of a mouthful to say. But if you want a light beer or something easy to drink, this is not the beer for you. Nah. Is it um higher alcohol content, though? Usually stouts typically are, right? This or this is a porter or whatever. This is a... Let me see what I mean. Uh, well, it looks like a stout. It tastes like a stout. Must be a stout. This one doesn't say alcohol content on it. I did a video about all the like the labeling on beers, and in Minnesota, there's no like standardized like what information you have to have on beers, so every beer can be labeled different. Well, aren't stouts and porters like basically the same thing? Yes and no. They're a little different. I think stouts are a little drier, less sugar, and porters are a little more like like grain forward typically you'll end up with like oatmeal or things like that that make it a little softer in the mouth mm -hmm. whereas porters are a little more like dry and, and like thin all right so i'm gonna arrange these how i like them from worst to best so my worst was probably the pills my second favorite is probably gonna be the porter Followed by the amber and then the black. I like this one the most. So that's how I would rank them. My favorite to least favorite. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So I'd go with the oh wait, worst is that way, yes. Okay. This is the worst one. Whichever one you put here is the one that we're gonna have as the worst. Yeah, okay, so obviously. Jason here likes the darker beers. I like the lighter beers. That's not because I'm female. That's just because I like them lighter. Right? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Final set. Final answer. Is that your final answer? I believe so. We're gonna go the the brick licking the, one. Who is wants the best. to be a millionaire? Music. Oh, wait, no, 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 it's that one where, sh oh, crap, see, I don't even remember what it's called right now. Where they're like, is that your final answer? Oh, no, okay, no, which one was I thinking of? Ah, dang it, I, this is the wrong time to not know. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. That's Goodbye. it, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, so this is my weakest link. Goodbye. This, this is the second weakest link, and goodbye. My final answer? Brick licking one. That's your favorite? Yes. Out of all of them. And then Toga Party. I will have to say the Black Bach is my favorite, followed by the Brick. I do like licking bricks from time to time. It's just a nice pastime. All right. Well, as always, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Minnesota Beer Benter. I hope you enjoyed my special guest, Angie. And until next time, grab a beer, choose a friend, and hit that like button.